we have a function whose range, both its domain and range are both real numbers. And it's given to be continuous over the entire number line. And for any two variables, x, y, uh, real numbers, we have f of x plus y equals f of x plus f of y over 1 minus 4 times f x f, x, f, x, f y. So given that f prime of 0 is equal to half, then we want to find out the explicit form of f of x. So the fact that we're given a derivative at a certain point motivates me to maybe we can use uh, setting up some differential equations to find out the explicit form of f. But to set up a differential equation, maybe we need to, sh need to find out if the function is uh, not only differentiable at zero, but is it differentiable over the entire number line? Right? Of course, uh, it's already continuous. So what if we can use some special values? For example, we let x equal to y equal to 0. That way we have f of 0 is equal to twice of f of 0 over 1 minus 4 times f squared of 0. So that way, that way we have f of 0, right, multiply this over, minus 4 times f cube of 0 is equal to twice of f0. Right, so that we move this term onto over to the other side and also this term onto the other side. We have 4 times f cube of 0 plus f of 0 is equal to 0. Now extract f of 0. We have 4 times f square of 0 plus 1 is equal to 0. Now Either f of 0 is equal to 0 or this term equal to 0, but this term cannot equal to 0 because f, like I said, it's defined over real numbers. It's mapped onto also real numbers. So there's no way for, no way for f to be complex numbers. So f has to be real numbers. So real numbers squared, always positive or 0. So plus 1 cannot be 0. Right? So the only way f of 0 is equal to zero. And then, then like I said, we, we want to test out if it's uh, to differentiable over the entire number line, right? not just at zero, but the entire. So to find out derivative at some random point x, right? fix x, right? fix any x, right, the derivative according to the first principle that is equal to the f of x plus h plus y, whatever, f x plus y minus f of x over y. Right? We let y approach 0. Right? If, if this limit exists, then that means it's differentiable, right, first principle. Now, according to the given given condition, right? So that way f of x plus y is equal to the, that is, that is equal to f x plus f of y over 1 minus 4 times f of x, f of y minus f of x. Right? So that is equal to y 1 minus 4 f x f y f x plus f y minus f f x this plus this times that 4 times f square x f y right so f of f x right. then we just uh, subtract f of y right. subtract f of y 
And this time, this time. This time, one minus four, F, X, F, Y. F, Y. Y. One plus four times F square X. All right, this time. So that way, that way I have F of Y over Y times one minus four Fx Fy. One plus four F squared X. Right. Yes. So uh, this part, F of Y over Y, uh, like I said, eventually we're going to let Y approach zero. But we're given that, given F derivative at zero is already given to be half. Right? So remember, first principle, derivative at zero, what's the definition? Right? That, that, that can be written into, so, so this part can be written into y, f of zero plus y. Remember, y will go to zero, y will tending towards zero, minus zero, right? So, like I said, zero is already f of zero, like I work, just worked out, right? So this is eventually f of zero. Right, that is exactly the definition of derivative at zero, if we let y tending towards zero, right? So this eventually tending toward f prime of zero, right? given to be half. So this part tending toward half. So this part tending towards what? F of y, y tending towards zero. If it's continuous, is it continuous? Yes, it's continuous. So this part will eventually tending toward the functional value at zero. That is F of zero. That is just zero. Right, so this part will be gone, just just one on the bottom. So eventually, the whole the, the whole term will tending toward half times what over one, one plus four times f square x over 1, right? Because x, like I said, we choose any random x and fix it. Find out the derivative at this point x, right? So this is exactly the explicit form of the derivative of the derivative of the function f at x. Right. So like I said, we eventually found out the explicit form of the derivative of f of x that is equal to this part, right, as, as y approached zero. So differential equation can now be set, right? So the derivative, let's just call it f prime of x, denoted as y, right? But this y is different from that y, right? Uh, here, this y, x are, uh, you know, both independent variables, but this y, this y represents the, uh, no, uh, y prime. So f of x denoted as y, right? so different from this y. So that means y prime is equal to half of one plus four times f squared, that is y squared. 
right? Differential equation. And also the initial condition. Right, what's the f of zero equal to zero, right? Previously I worked out. Right, y of zero f of zero. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, when x is equal to zero, y is equal to zero. Initial condition. So this time separation of variable. Right? Because remember y prime is equal to dy over dx. Right? That is equal to half of 1 plus 4 times y squared. Right, separation of variable. Multiply dx over, multiply this part under. So, so that way we can have 2dy over 1 plus 4 times y squared. That is equal to dx. Right? So integrate on both sides. So we have twice of dy 1 plus 4y square. Right. Integral dx. Here the uh, inside in integral we have the consistent variable that is y. So uh, that is equal to arc tangent arc arc tangent 4y squared is in fact 2y quantity squared so that is 2y right but to double check if it's the really the antiderivative we have to differentiate the result right differentiate the result we have 1 over 1 plus 2y quantity squared there's 4y squared but using chain rule right multiplied by its coefficient right that is 2 right 2 coming out so we have to divide it by 2 to cancel out the 2 so divided by 2, right? everything is gone. That is really true. Yes, exactly equal to, equal to this part, right? So that is equal to the, the x plus c. Right? Find out c using initial condition. Right? x is equal to 0, y is equal to 0. So in other words, this time, according to definition of arc tangent, so that means tangent of x plus c is equal to 2y. So meaning y is equal to half of tangent of x plus c. So when x is equal to 0, y is equal to 0. Initial condition, half of tangent of c, which means c must be equal to 0, which means f of x has to equal half of tangent x, 